Welcome to the show. My name is Ronald Nokwara. Today we've got a special guest, a brother of mine I've known for years uh, through his community work in and around Melbourne. He has done so much work that I don't even remember the first time I met him. But the last time I met, uh, he came to the studio uh, was about four years ago. It's embarrassing, but at least he's here today. Brother Blessing, we want to welcome you back to the studio. A new studio too. Yeah, thank you, my brother. What do you and, think? Uh, nice things, man. Good work. I yeah. am uh, marveling at the handyman, handymanship. Uh, you've done very well. <laughs> you've done thank, very th- well. Th- thank you very much. My <laughs> wife always say to me, I've I, outdone myself. Uh, this, is, this is great. Yeah. This is great. Incredible. We'll and, thank you, and thank you for supporting. Because you've been supporting. Yep. Yeah, we've been with been with you on the journey for a while now. <laughs> so yeah, brother. happy to be here. Happy to be in the new environment. So we're looking yeah. forward to being here a few more times in the near future. <laughs> in and out of COVID. <laughs> in and out. Oh, even before. So yeah, we've been we've been uh, we've been together on a long journey. How did brother. you survive COVID? Hey, uh, it was a daunting task for all. I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's put it this way: when you don't have a finish line to something, it's it's not it's not easy. <laughs> so <laughs> all of us were dodging and weaving, but uh, we we are we. Are thankful that uh, we came out the better I think after yeah. all the experiences that we all shared and uh, I think uh, from the community work that we've all uh, been doing yeah. uh, the feedback from the crowd is that yes uh, lots of changes have happened uh, this is the new normal as we all say now uh, but it. yeah it's, it's really good I love it <laughs> uh, man um, it's good that um, uh, we have come here and I understand also that uh Obviously, you are a resident of uh, Cranbourne Garden, what? Mm-hmm. Which is just close by to me. Yeah, just behind you there. For, for people who don't know where, you know, yeah. uh, Cranbourne Garden, what is, yeah. uh, on the map, on the Melbourne map, yep. uh, where is it actually? Okay, so if you're pointing south from the city there, yeah. southeast, uh, we are in the southeast suburbs, All we right. are probably on the terminal side of the southeastern suburbs uh, when you're getting towards uh, uh, the bay. Uh, so we've got uh, Botanic Ridge there, Junction Village, uh, uh, Blind Bite, uh, Warneet, Piersdale, um, uh, Junction Village, Cannons Creek. Those are the domain. That's the place that I spend most of my time. That's what I call my neighborhood, and that's what the Cramon Gardens would. That's so, a quieter area. Yeah? <laughs> well, there are some busy yeah? spots in it. Uh, developments ah, happening. Quiet uh, compared to, to, to <laughs> Melbourne city, man, with all those cars, everything <laughs> pegged yeah. up and stuff like that. But I, I like I like that area. I like this area yeah. that we have the studio yeah. because we're in Clyde. Yeah. New buildings, everyone building, and the, the lands are being opened. Yeah. Heaps of population, yeah. diversity and stuff. That's it. So we're expanding. I think as of the census of 2023, KC, the city of KC was at 392 odd thousand people in this place wow. uh, with a lot more coming in ever since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it, yeah, it's an ever expanding space. And as you said, we are living in the same council area, but it's a bit of a jaunt between us. <laughs> There's a bit of a drive to get to where we are. So it's, yeah, a, that's true. it's, it's not a small council area. Mm-hmm. It's pretty big. And where yeah. I'm living there in the Kremlin Gardens, that's actually the biggest ward the, uh, geographically All right. of the 12 wards that are in Casey. That's What's the, the population one. like? So we are sitting there with, I think voting age is about 23,000 people there. Ah. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's a whole lot more. And yes, with the development that's been happening around, especially in the um, the areas like Botanic Ridge where the development's been a full force, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot more population sitting there. I think you're looking at almost 10,000 people just in the Botanic Ridge and uh, wow. area and surrounds with the remaining uh, populace as well uh, in the other, other uh, parts of the Cremon Gardens Ward. So yeah, a lot of people uh, that are... Ha- I like having that area because yeah. of the of that uh, other park. What yeah. do you call it? Yeah, so the Cremon, the Botanical Gardens there. Yeah, beautiful yeah. place. Beautiful bro. place, yes. It's beautiful a, place. It's one of so our it brings a lot of people from, from up out, uh, from Melbourne yep. City itself. Over the other side, they'll come. They'll yes. Come to you. Yes. So uh, a nice tourist attraction, a hidden gem that we've got in our yeah, ne- neck of the woods. Mm. It's within walking distance from me, so that's <laughs> really good. Yeah. Uh, and yes, one of the also oh, you can walk from. I, can, I can walk there, and mm. I like w- taking my time, just taking strolls in that direction as well. So uh, yes, the tourists don't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they've got their own directions that they'll be going. We, the locals, know exactly where where Beautiful. we'll be spending most of our time. Yeah. All right. So so living in that area, man. Um and 
understand, man, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, that word there. Yeah. Uh, I understand uh, there's a platform that you are creating for them. Yep. And uh, can you explain to us, uh, can you tell us the name of the platform and uh, what the platform is all about? Yeah. So, yeah, being a long-term resident of the city of Casey, mm -hmm. uh, getting close to two decades here now. Mm -hmm. uh, and two decades? <laughs> almost. Wow. Almost there. <laughs> almost there. Uh, yes. Um, uh, there are little issues here and there that you find when you're living in a place. You know, when you're passing mm -hmm. through, you never really notice certain things. But when you're living in a place, little little inconveniences that, that end up get, getting to you. This is, um, yes the reason why this platform now exists is basically to kind of collate from the from the um, uh, neighbors uh, that I have in the ward there uh, the issues that we have the the things that might be going with disrepair mm. the little nuisances yes <laughs> those, those what's the name of uh, the platform yeah so that's Casey Voices actually so caseyvoices.com.au uh, mm. is the website but we've also got a Facebook page there um, that uh, locals can actually join in and actually continue to contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, so where they find uh, there might be something that's faulty or uh, a pothole somewhere or something's gone wrong, um, it's a good place for us to compile what's happening in the area uh, mm -hmm. and basically have a visibility on where issues are to allow people, especially in the community there, to avoid what needs to be avoided, but also to take account of what needs to be advocated so that it can be repaired or uh, renewed. So, yeah, Casey Voices is there right now. Wait, 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 call it uh, Casey Voices. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's the voice of the people. The voice of the people, <laughs> it's the yeah. the voice of the people. Uh, we want to hear from the yeah. people uh, what's what's on their mind. So what's going good is always good to hear. Uh, so mm. this is good, do, doing well, or this is going good. That's always wonderful to hear. But if Beautiful. people also have things that they're like, oh, this is not going so well, uh, mm. could this be improved? We want to hear that. We want to be able to advocate for that as well. And then there's also those things that are drastically wrong. So if you get uh, areas where you, you notice that there's a lot more uh, traffic congestion happening all the time because of uh, certain things that have happened there or accidents are happening. Or a from. certain pothole which <laughs> has been there for 15 years. Yeah? Uh, hopefully we don't have anything that old. Uh, that's a very mature one. How, how, do you, how do you plan to effectively engage residents from diverse backgrounds to ensure their voices are heard? Yeah, so uh, as, as we said, it's an ever-expanding uh, space being the city, uh, city of Casey and uh, lots and lots of uh, different people and different backgrounds all now constitute what we call uh, the city of Casey and in my area there. Uh, the intention is to kind of gather from the public what's important to them because mm -hmm. uh, being all different people, mm -hmm. we, our priorities are different and we want to make sure that everybody's comfortable in the place that they live. Because I'm sure you put farmers too over there. We do. We actually do. I was driving yeah. through the farms just this afternoon actually looking at what's happening there, the Shores farms at the back there mm -hmm. on the way to Turidin. Uh So I was going through and, wow. and uh, seeing what, what's going on along the way there. So you actually go on the ground. Yeah, so I'm always up and about actually looking and seeing what's happening there. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a town planner by trade, uh, so <laughs> I've been doing that for over a decade now. So I'm actually interested in land use issues and mm -hmm. seeing what's happening around there. Uh, I've worked with the council in a, in, in the pri while I was in the private sector. I've worked with the council for a number of developments thus far. And my day-to-day -day role involves a planning for major developments. So when you're yeah. looking at um, the pl the word plan, yeah. do you think um, what they're doing at the moment is good as a town planner? Were you looking at it? You go like, oh, we can we can expand here. We can do this here. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm just just uh, this this outside the the realm of what we're talking about. That's, that's outside good. the realm of uh, the platform, yeah. I'm just. I'm just yeah. wondering. I'm just anxious. I'm <laughs> well, interested to know what you think. It's good that you're asking because these are the things that Because you look me. at the plans, yeah? That's it. So I see all the plans of what's happening. So there's strategic plans that are in place right now for the greater Casey area. Uh, we have growth areas that are still designated in this place that still need to be developed. Mm. Um, and one of the ones in my ward, actually, it, that is going to kick into full gear in the coming years, the one that the Victorian Planning Authority is working on right now, is the Devon Meadows mm. uh, Precinct Structure Plan. Uh, and in that area right now, presently, you'll find the older, uh, more established houses. 
but there is proposals for new development to come through that direction. So there is a potential for us to have some new schools in the area. So I think a lot of parents like it's myself beautiful. will be happy. Yeah. And yes, I would want to be able young to... Young couples, yes. young kids, <laughs> even, you know, even older ones, yes. creative, creating of employment and stuff That's like that, it, yeah. new teachers and stuff. So there's opportunities there for us to advocate for certain things to come in while they're doing this. Because right now the plans are still fluid. They're not really set. I've, oh, been, okay. I've been party to some of the conversations on my other roles as as part of the board of a local uh, school in the area. So we've had some um, bilateral uh, conversations with uh, the state government on their thoughts about where schools are going, etc. And so mm -hmm. I've got that, uh, that insight on some of the other things that are happening in the background that uh, maybe some, other, uh, some people might not know. Uh, but yeah, it's good to know. That it's good uh, that we have you here. <laughs> At some point when you come back again, <laughs> tell us the secrets. Well, we'll see what we can disclose. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, uh, all I can say is that yeah, there's good plans that are coming for development to actually come through to the area. Mm -hmm. uh, we are basically next in the queue now. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been happening in the Turidan Ward, which is your your ward here. In oh, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that have been happening here. Uh, there's also been that push in my ward, which is the Cram and Gardens Ward, for the completion of the uh, Botanic Ridge mm. uh, precinct structure plan there. Uh, but yeah, what's happening next is going to be the Devon Meadows one. And yeah, th there's a lot of things that are potentially going to be coming our direction. So I'm sure this is... Um, uh, let's put a bookmark on that. We'll discuss those uh, as they as they unravel. Beautiful. I, I'm mostly interested now, because yeah. now you, that you talked about the platform, brother, yeah. um, what methods like uh, will you employ to yeah. capture and analyze uh, the community feedback, such as survey, you know, yeah. focus groups? Uh, or online platforms. Yes. So we're going to try and use everything at our disposal. We've got a few ideas on our uh, on the table right now, but presently we've got the uh, online groups where people can actually leave feedback there. Mm -hmm. uh, so anything that they find that is um, anything good, that's wonderful. For uh, those who just joined, yes. we're talking about the platform. What is it called? The KC Voices. Yes. Where people can yeah come in and give their feedback on the issues that are in their area, the mm -hmm. areas that need improvement, and also uh, to give commendations where good things are happening as well. But mm -hmm. it's basically a centralized place where people can actually talk about the things. That talk about the, 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 the focus groups, the surveys, yeah. the online platforms. You yep. know, feedback, yes. community feedback. So basically we're trying to open up avenues for everybody to have a say. So some people might be more comfortable on their phones. Uh, so if they're on Facebook, for example, they might feel more comfortable while they're walking around. Oh, I've found a pothole over here. Take a picture of that, post that on the group and say, I've found it in this location. Um, it's been there for a couple of weeks or uh, this is a, a new one. This might cause a hazard. Maybe drivers in the locality can start avoiding it because mm -hmm. it won't show up um, on your Google Maps. But no. if us as locals, if we know that there's a problem in this particular area, area we can make accommodations for it but it also allows us to take stock of issues that are happening in the area so that we can mm -hmm. advocate for their resolution we're also going to employ uh, a survey so there'll be an in-person survey that'll be uh, moving through the the neighborhoods uh, myself and part of the team will be walking around actually asking people uh, what what they want to see change in their locality in the coming years. So, this collaboration. Yes, yeah, so this is us actually meeting and greeting and hearing from the people directly uh, mm -hmm. on the things that may be um, of interest to them, things that they're passionate about, things that, that actually are important to them. And we want to be able to kind of document all of that so that we can have a centralized place where all the feedback of our ward is collected and so we can have that accountability so that when we bring this petition of ours to council, we can say these are the issues that have been raised by the locals of this area. Just these on one platform? In the one place. We don't have to be scratching around and saying, I saw something over there. Because I, I find it difficult there. sometimes. Yeah. When I have an issue here in uh, the Tura <laughs> Dunwat, I'm not blaming anyone because <laughs> I think we're, we, we're under administration at the yeah. moment. We and are. this is the first time that we're having... Uh, councillors coming yep. in and council vote. Well, what happened? Can you explain to, to us what happened to the KC? Because everything yep. else we're talking about at yep. the moment is under KC, KC Ward, KC... That's it. That's what it. do they call it? KC, KC City Council, yeah. yeah. So What happened? Yeah, over the course of the the last um, <laughs> the last uh, sitting of the council, mm -hmm. uh, there were some ir irregularities that were noted, that were picked up on. Corruption. Um, those are the words, yeah, and <laughs> it uh, it ended up with uh, yeah the state government stepping in uh, mm. and basically removing the entire council. 
So for how council, long? So our council's been under administration since about 2020. Mm. Uh, so we've had administrators actually running the day to day um, of, of the of the council area. But this is the fr- uh, the first opportunity, a uh, fresh opportunity for the people of Kesey to actually elect people to represent them. Because uh, it was so difficult to just. That's that's why I asked you yeah. that question. Because it was difficult for me to address issues like you know yeah I'm, I'm worried about potholes yeah. really that, yeah. that's my that's my real concern <laughs> and i'm also worried about schools yep. around the areas that we live in yep. here so now that they've got counselors and everything is yep. happening so we were under administration for the past four years about four years now uh, and that ends in October 2024. So in October 2024, everybody who's eligible to vote gets to vote for their councillor. So and in the interim as well, Casey used to be, I think, about five wards, uh, but now it's actually 12. So it's been kind of cut into 12 different wards. All right. So these tw- this is the first time that it's, it's happened um, um, since since the administration changed. And basically, we have about an equal number of voting people uh, in, in each ward. So about 20, 22,000 uh, in each ward. So every ward will have an opportunity to vote for someone to represent them. Uh, so I- at this time, you'll probably start seeing signs and flyers of people campaigning to be councillors in every s- single ward. And each ward will have the opportunity now to hear the stories of the people that want to stand for them and actually choose and elect someone to represent them for the next four years. So in October 2024, that's when everybody gets the opportunity uh, to go and vote uh, for their next councillors uh, who will then form the council that will lead uh, this entire um, council area for the next four years. Uh, so, yeah, basically this is what's happening on the ground right now. In my area, I'm also going to be putting my hand up to actually do that for... Wow, congratulations. Are you putting your hands <laughs> in? And, and you've got this platform. So, so that's why I was going to ask. Yeah. And so that means that word... Yeah. You live in. Yep. That's Cranbourne Gardens Ward. Cranbourne Gardens Ward, yes. You're going to be creating a platform yep. that people can access. That's it. So they can access. And you're also running for it. That's it. That's correct. So basically, we're going to allow people to access the platform to be able to put in uh, all their feedback. Mm. Uh, this will, con- uh, will constitute a running sheet of the issues that are in our area. The nice thing about it is it will have dates and times of when these things were reported and when these things were notified so that we can actually count <laughs> in terms of days, weeks, You'll months. You'll be accountable days. for for everything. That's it. So when you can count With things, my portal issues, <laughs> I'll come. When you can count things, you can be accountable <laughs> for them. Yeah. So yeah, the idea is for us to be able to then present this list of aspirations and desires and questions to the sitting council once they are elected to say these are the issues that are in the Crime and Gardens ward. Why, why, um, why, why the platform? Do you, do you, do you feel like um, the platform itself, obviously accountability, yeah. as well as uh, just sometimes community safety is just good yep. to just know what's going on in your... I, I believe in full visibility um, as part of my role in my day-to-day life. I Does it work in in, in 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 such things as, you know, yeah. cancel? Yeah, so as part of my role in my, in my other life, in my day-to-day work, mm. I actually do stakeholder engagement. So that's part of my day-to-day is meeting with different people from different spectrums and getting them to share ideas and come to resolutions and make make things go forward together. Mm-hmm. So I do this across the country, across different states. I, 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 I relate with people in local government, in state government, government agencies, etc. So let's say from my personal experience mm-hmm. in my professional capacity and also as a, as a civilian, I, I have seen how it, it's best to always have all the available information available to people so that they can digest it. Because a lot of times we find that uh, a lot of disagreements and a lot of confusion happens when you try and filter and limit information for people. Let people understand. Let people see. It's always good to be able to actually see what's going on. Whether it's good or bad, it's good to be able to see this is what's going on in this particular area. This is the topic at hand. And then when people come together to actually try and resolve things, they can actually have full visibility of what they're trying to resolve. And then all the ideas about how to resolve it start flowing from there. And when people come to an agreement together to deal with certain things a certain way, 
oftentimes everybody commits to that way because it was done in consultation, it was done in unity, and oftentimes, even though it may be tough, but it's easier for that decision to carry through because everybody's supporting it. When things are done in secret and we don't want another situation... There's no accountability. Yeah, we don't want another situation... What about credibility? Yeah. How, how do you plan to build... Uh, trust yep. and credibility with the community to engage uh, and yeah. uh, participate in, in yeah so aside from my personal credentials uh, my intention is to make sure that anything that is discussed that is uh, gathered that is collected that is placed in in what we call the KC voices there mm. all of that is something that is visible to the people that need to see it in mm -hmm. order to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the people that end up um, uh, working on this are, are able to to put their best foot forward and say, this is how we're going to be tackling this and that and this. And we can say that because this is our background or this is why we're going to do it or this is the resources. It gives that credibility that there is something that is uh, needing to be resolved. This is how it's going to be resolved. These are the right people to resolve it. And this is how they plan to do it. It helps everybody to kind of see that's the, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. Somebody's accountable for it. Mm -hmm. This is their credentials as mm -hmm. to why they think that they can do it. And this is the timeline that they're working towards. Then you review the credibility. That builds uh, credibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that then makes everybody um, uh, more comfortable <laughs> with uh, letting somebody else lead and uh, deal with situations. Because what you don't want is everybody trying to do something. Uh, and then we have um, um, a diverging uh, um, um diverging uh, aspects of effort going in different directions that are not actually helping to fix the situation. What we want to do is kind of bring all our efforts into the one one place mm -hmm. and then try and deal with our issues so that we can kind of walk through that entire list that we're gathering and see how much we can get done in the next four years. Talking, we want to talk about uh, also advocacy and uh, advocacy yep. tactics. Yep. What specific, specific advocacy tactics yep. will you employ uh, such as media outreach, lobbying, yep. or other community organizations. Right. So for my people in the Cramon Gardens Wood, um, mm -hmm. we need somebody who can actually voice our concerns. Uh, not only just voice them, but voice them clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, voice them clearly. And Now you're talking as yeah. a counselor. <laughs> well, yeah. a, a candidate. So a I'm candidate. Putting, <laughs> I'm putting myself out there as a candidate. Yes, uh, and, and also... Yeah. Um, a person yeah. who has a platform that helps the community. That's right. So we have um, the platform that's got the community's interest at heart, yes. gathering the community's interest. It's not going to be flavored by somebody else's opinion. This is mm -hmm. the community's feedback all sitting in one place. Mm -hmm. Then there will be a need for somebody to be able to collate all of that data. Mm -hmm. And so the advocate said, tactics. Yeah, yeah present it, to be able to present it uh, so that it can be digestible, mm -hmm. so that it can be understood, mm -hmm. so that people can actually work on it. So the advocacy is going to need somebody who knows what the data is, how to deal with it, who's got experience. And you're a town with. planner. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, who, who else can, <laughs> can, well, do, or can read all these, yeah, these I, data? I mean, the... The work experience that I've had, the, the lived experience of being in the area. Um, and you love the place anyway. I love the place. I've, I haven't left. I came and I've never left. Yeah. <laughs> I had the opportunity to go. And you want to place. build it for your kids as well? I said, we have committed to the place. My kids go to school there. I live there. We've invested there. We live, yeah. So we're part of the local community, we're part mm. of a local school, part of a local uh, a, a community group as well. We're, we're not going anywhere. How's it's the place? Just, have, you, have you been walking around, checking the area? I have. Yourself? I have. So. Um, um, the areas are different uh, when you walk through. So the newer developments have taken consideration of more contemporary needs. So there's a footpath everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so kids can actually walk safely on the roads mm -hmm. uh, because there's a footpath. But in the older areas, mm -hmm. uh, that's a bit neglected because you find people walking their dogs in the street. Cars are coming. Oh, I uh, see. Little children are in the street taking walks with their parents. Uh, if they're un, um, uh, if they're unaccompanied, mm -hmm. they're cycling by themselves on the same streets. Mm -hmm. we're, we're having situations where traffic is sharing. What about local businesses? Isn't it? Yeah, and with the local businesses as well, um, the newer developments have got this... Um, uh, 
local de- businesses being incorporated in new businesses that are being incorporated into into these newer developments mm-hmm. but the older areas um they're in a bit of neglect they're not much uh, in terms of rejuvenation has happened mm-hmm. if you go to psdl for example or wonit or blind bite yeah, you'll yeah. find it's still the same shop and still the same area and mm-hmm. the roads there some of them still have dirt roads right now all right yeah you still drive up a dirt road all to get right. to the to the local milk bar or to the local mm-hmm. shop uh, so we don't want that to continue especially when we are able to see that development is happening elsewhere mm-hmm. we don't want other people in the same area to be missing out so um, definitely the advocacy for me is going to be to make sure that there's equity in terms of the way that development is happening in the area we mm-hmm. don't want to leave certain areas and certain pockets unattended because priorities are elsewhere we want a kind of everybody to rise i like that saying that uh, a rising tide raises all boats we want that rising tide to actually raise all boats we don't want just one boat to be sailing away mm-hmm. we want everybody to kind of feel the thrust of uh, the development that's happening in the area Oh, so with the platform itself, how will you measure the success uh, of your advocacy efforts and uh, demonstrate uh, the impact on uh, uh, the communities? Of okay, so the first measure of success is going to be actually collecting the data. So mm-hmm. as the data is compiled, that is a measure of success in itself. If that is if people go on the platform. Yes. So we're encouraging people to go on the platform. Go on the platform. Go have your say. As the platform says, if you go and uh, open the platform right now, uh, your voice matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the running uh, story that we're going to be going with. Your voice matters. Mm-hmm. What you desire, what you aspire to, what concerns you. Your voice matters. Free speech. We the Americans <laughs> will go like first amendment. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, so for us, uh, your voice matters. We want to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. Mm-hmm. Um, you might think that your issue is small, therefore it needs to be neglected. No, no, no. We want to keep a running log of every single thing that mm-hmm. is of a concern to our council area and to our ward, especially the people in Cranbourne Gardens Ward. You've got me uh, making sure that we want to collate all our interests, our uh, aspirations, all of that into one place mm. so that we can actually have a accountability on how do we move from where we are now mm-hmm. to where we aspire to be, what needs to happen between now and then, and uh, basically how can we keep the coming council accountable for the demands and the needs of the people of the Cranbourne Gardens Ward. Say, when uh, new lines are drawn, you told me these ones are new at the moment yes. after the administrations. Yeah. Conflicts always happen. That's it. Conflict resolution. How will you address any potential conflicts uh, or disagreements within the community and uh, find common ground? Yeah. So, again, leaning on... These are new lines. <laughs> Everything is new. Yes. So, yes. Uh, though the land itself doesn't change, the lines are drawn in different places, uh, mm-hmm. meaning that uh, certain people are now um, uh, voting together when once upon a time they might not have been voting together. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like to look at it this way. We are all one Casey. Mm-hmm. All of us are one Casey. And so when we are going forward to make decisions about our future leaders, we must have front of mind what is it that we actually want for our community. If we have an agreement on what it is that we actually want for our community by having all the inputs in one place, mm-hmm. then I believe it's easier for us to map out how to move from where we are today to where we're trying to be. And that in itself removes a certain layer of conflict because people are seeing that their voices are heard, mm-hmm. that their individual um, ideals and aspirations are actually considered. We are not marginalizing anyone. We are not just preferring anyone. We want all boats to rise. As I said before, a rising tide must raise all boats. Mm-hmm. So when we have every single person's thoughts, intents, questions all in the one place, uh, it's it, you can't argue with facts. You can't mm-hmm. argue with statistics. All right? mm-hmm. Opinions, yes, everybody can argue over, but statistics that say this is a hazard or this is a problem, or this is causing us angst, and this is causing us grief. Those are statistics that we want to be able to pull from that platform and say, these are X number of people that have said this about this topic. People have said that it's been going on from this time even until now. Mm -hmm. This is a priority, and it needs to be dealt with. Uh, It brings the community to a place where they can agree and say, out of the community, this is the input that we've received, mm-hmm. and this is definitely a priority. It might not have been my priority, mm-hmm. but because it's my community's priority, it's now my co- priority because okay. we are only as strong as the weakest one. We want to make sure that every single one of us is accounted for, and that's what makes a strong community. Beautiful platform that you 
trying to create and also oh, you've already created yes. it anyway and also is a person who is campaigning as a councillor yeah beautiful how do sustainability yeah of the platform yeah so how will you ensure a long term sustainability okay of case voices this is why we decided and i decided to build it separate to anything else uh, i didn't want it to disappear tomorrow uh, i didn't want it to be a lost cause so we've built it and paid so that it exists mm-hmm. <laughs> for at least the next four years mm-hmm. uh, we'll try and keep it going for as long as we can keep it going and that means you are funding it from your own funds that's great yeah it, like you, you are a community member who loves his community so much you can fork out your own money for people to come and have their concern on the that's on right. the platform that's right that's I, beautiful i am concerned and i am a part of this community and mm-hmm. the only way to get us to or see the target and to work towards is for us to have something that's central that we can all look at and say this is where we are mm-hmm. you know when you have a broken window on a street and everybody can see it it's very easy to start advocating for that window to be to be fixed, to be fixed but yeah. if it's only one person who sees it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it might be a problem to the person who sees it or sometimes there's no it. way to to address the issue you you don't know where to go. to go so if somebody is able to go on the platform and say hey guys have you seen this mm-hmm. like somebody says yeah we've seen it it's been here for six months now mm-hmm. such and such a person posted it six months ago mm-hmm. and still not resolved i think the counselor of that particular area will have a bit of heat on him or her to mm. be able to say what are you doing about this we've raised this over so long even people who might not have been there when this was raised new people who are coming in are still raising this issue now why is it not resolved mm-hmm. that level of transparency <laughs> brings about accountability some people will say um councils have their own website what's the what, 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 what what would you say is uh the difference what was more powerful about uh, the 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 platform you're yep. creating uh, compared to the website itself when you put complaints there yep. and stuff like that yeah yep so we are not taking away from what council does mm-hmm. council serves a critical function <laughs> mm-hmm. of making sure things continue to run our bins being collected uh, us all being able to travel on safe roads us having um infrastructure like lighting on the roads that's all what council does mm-hmm. when we send questions and issues over to council we are sending them into the inner repository within council for council to then deal with that and assign someone and deal with it mm-hmm. but we never know that somebody else has said it it's it's gone in there and uh, until it's assigned and is dealt with um 10 other people might end up going in there to say exactly the same thing uh, which is good but then it doesn't give people visibility so we don't want people to end up with apathy where they're like i sent something in and maybe nobody's going to listen to it we want people to be able to say hang on there's some way where i know that i can check on everything that's going on in my neighborhood uh-huh. uh and that place if something is there it stays there until mm-hmm. something is resolved uh, we want to be able to um, put a green tick to say completed put a green tick to say done and remove it from the list of concerns and mm-hmm. put it on the resolved list so that mm-hmm. we can have a list of resolved items where at the end of the next four years where we can say these are the things that were actually actioned and resolved that type of visibility mm-hmm. we d- we don't get from any other platform i believe this will be unique in that it gives the people of the cramon gardens ward and the wider casey area a place where they can actually go and point to things and say look and then have a transparency on seeing how that uh, how long it takes to get resolved mm-hmm. and when it does get resolved how satisfactory it it was resolved i i'm sure it will also inspire confidence in the of the community in their councillors in their council mm-hmm. when they see things being ticked off and it's no longer going to be something that um, can be pushed to the side mm-hmm. uh, for later it's something that will be visible for anyone to log in and check at any time to be able to go and say okay i i saw an issue i've just put my own issue there mm-hmm. i found it there we will have um uh the need obviously for moderators to make sure that uh things that are not untoward are not put put up there but overall we're not trying to censor anything we're trying to actually gather as much raw data as we can 
on mm-hmm. what the issues are in our area so that people can actually have a say and show that their voice really matters. A beautiful brother blessing. I love this platform. What's the name of the platform again? Caseyvoices.com.au where, 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 where else can we get? Can we get on Facebook, yep. Instagram and stuff like that? So there's a Facebook group that's been started there uh, mm. where people can actually join. Uh, the lo- locals can join there and, and put their commentary in there. There's a Facebook page that's there mm. that will show any upcoming events where we'll be walking around because we want to be able to be amongst the people. So we'll also notify people that oh, we're taking a walk uh, in Warneet this weekend. Mm. Uh, uh, come meet us at the tennis court, or Beautiful. we're taking a walk in Blind Bite, or we're taking a walk in PSD, so that people can actually know where things are going to be, where people are going to be, and what's happening. Mm-hmm. It's also going to serve as a community page where people can actually say soccer is on, uh, in this place, or oh, footy's yeah. over there. So, or oh, there's an event there, exactly. you know. There's an I, I like African events. I like yeah. you know you know African events when yeah. when they do their barbecues and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, because I miss home and stuff like that. <laughs> so like I only like African events. I've got you know my Indian uh, brothers and yes. stuff. They yeah. always invite me to to, yep. to, to their own things, yep. and you, you know, especially Diwali when Diwali That's is there and stuff like that. You festival know, festival of colors. Yeah, yes. my, my, my <laughs> brothers always cancel their shifts, and you know, it's a festival and stuff like that. So, so I like the diversity yes. uh, in your ward yeah. as well. So, uh, coming from um, from administration, w- w- what things as a person who is also we've heard of the platform, yeah. and now we just want to talk. Uh, generally, as yeah. as someone who who is uh, going to be uh, contesting yeah. as a councillor in there, what things do you think uh, should be changed at the moment? The things that you see. Yep. Mm. Okay. So we want to give commendations where good good work is being done. Uh, mm. So our council area is not run down. So we want to uh, we want to be thankful for that. Yes, uh, there's yes. been some good work that's been put in over the years and mm-hmm. decades beforehand. Um, but we can see, especially in the Cram and Gardens Ward, they were not at par with what's happening elsewhere. So oh, okay. the development and the attention uh, seems to be focused uh, in other areas and understandable to some extent, uh, but we don't want to be left out of the loop of what's happening. We don't want to... Um, we're all ratepayers. We are mm-hmm. all residents of the city of Casey. Yeah, uh, it shouldn't just be certain corners that are getting the maximum benefit. Uh, mm-hmm. Others as well. If I'm walking on a road that needs repair, I want it repaired. If I'm in an area where there's... Uh, um, no network coverage. <laughs> That's it. That I was going to ask you about. Net. I was actually on a call just as I was coming yeah. here, and I think we had to call back three times <laughs> just here. Did you just talk? And it's yeah. only ten minutes between me it's, and you, but I had to. Yeah. yeah. So Clyde. we want to advocate for more reception in the area, and mm-hmm. that's that comes first Please. by allocating land Please. for the development of mobile towers, and then allowing and facilitating the town planning. I'm a shift worker, so yep. sometimes when they ring me, yeah. I don't see the phone call until, you know, it's a missed call. But it's a missed call. By the time I call back, the shift is gone. There you go. And many emergencies. I, uh, my children oh, and yeah. I always have uh, have a, a little a joke that we tell each other that, yeah, you're now inclined. So if you're on a phone call or if you're on the mobile device and you're uh, listening to something or watching something, when you hear that uh, there's silence, the side, you you're know, entered you're inclined. inclined. So even if you're asleep and it's at night time, you're inclined. We want to remove that type of stigma. It's about time. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to be to have areas that have an endemic problem that continues to sit there like that. As council, we need to think as a whole council. So I'm not just worried about the Cramer Gardens Ward. I'm worried about the entire council. And, and as Clark, a resident. As a resident. So as a resident of Casey, I want to be able to be able to contact somebody in Casey anytime I need to without impedance. Mm. Uh, we need more uh, cell reception. Um, I was speaking with the senator, um, uh, Cassandra Fernando, and it, it's something that she's passionate about as well, is making mm. sure that this, this area has that network connected. Uh, so fortunately, I've managed to meet with, um, yeah, as I said, the senator. I've mm-hmm. also met our local uh, member of parliament, Pauline Richards. Mm-hmm. And in all those discussions, um, when you hear the passion that people have towards fixing these issues, I think council has a part to play. Yes, there are things that um, are in the, in the domain of the state government. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like right now, when you're in Warnie today, all the residents there, including myself, we want to see the jetty is restored. Uh, right now, they're in a state of disrepair. Uh, and uh, Why is that? Is that COVID or just the, just the government itself not attending to? Priorities. So the part that we as council can play is to advocate for certain things to be done. And we mm. know that these things are not in our domain. I've been there, man. Yeah, but we want to advocate. Get the jetties repaired. I mean, get 
it's a it's a it's a tourist attraction. It's a it's a place to yeah. go. We we want these places operational so that we can have the full you use. You can of hire them. a boat, go fishing. We and can stuff. have the full use of them. So I was uh, at um, uh, at the in Piercedale there. I was speaking to a gentleman who runs a, a fishing club. They'll be opening up uh, in uh, late October for their fishing. Beautiful. Uh, you you start having these chats with people and you you start hearing some of the things that are constantly there as problems that are not being dealt with and mm. we don't want that to be the case in KC we want to make sure that KC has uh, resolutions we want to be out of the 79 council areas in Victoria we want to make sure that KC is amongst the top of them we want to be the uh, a, a good place to live mm. not only for people who are passing through and going to tourist attractions like the botanical gardens there but mm. even for the local residents themselves we want mm. to be able to also experience the goodness of KC and so yeah that's one of the reasons why the platform exists and one of the reasons why I'm putting my hand up to to run for council the platform is called KC Voices so it's kcvoices.com that's the one and then on Facebook Facebook Instagram KC Voices KC Voices that's it and um council elections when are they so that's October so that uh, you know <laughs> We can invite you back, or you can come even before before yep, that. Yep. We can have another discussion, yep. and just you you tell us what's going on there on the ground. Yeah, how the campaign is going. Are you campaigning? Are yep. you walking around those? So I'll knocking be. around those, <laughs> so that people know you're coming. So I will be in the area. So mm. if you live in Cannons Creek, Blind Bight, Botanic Ridge, uh, if you live in at Piercedale and want it, if you haven't seen me already, because some people have already seen me, then you'll see me more in an f- official capacity. Are they friendly? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a more official capacity in the coming weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the intention is for us to be up and about all over the place to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to talk to us directly. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes the personal touch is important. Yeah. Somebody might not have the time to, to write an, uh, a letter or an email, but mm-hmm. to have a chat on the side of the uh, uh, on the side of a tennis court somewhere or maybe at the jetties uh, put the, the yeah. voice to the to the picture that exactly. you see yeah uh, your voice matters it's this constant theme your voice matters but sometimes they will see your picture we're like oh, I'm not, I never <laughs> interacted with this brother of yeah. mine they need to know who is wanting to represent them mm. they need to have trust in the person that they want to represent them they need to know that that person is not biased or and i know you're passionate partial. about your area. Yeah, and they need to know that the person is actually passionate to see things through. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, competent as well. So I've worked yeah. as a town planner Very in council. Competent. I've worked as a town planner for private developers as well uh, and as a consultant for many years. Mm-hmm. They need to know that the person is competent to be able to take what is a problem and find policy and procedures that need to be addressed uh, uh, for those things to be done. They need somebody who can actually advocate within the letter of the regulations, who is able to interpret laws, who is able to understand what it is that needs to be done, what needs to be amended. Because we have the opportunity as a council, as a local council, to have local laws updated to match what's going on there. That's 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 a power that the council has to be able to deal with specific issues. And I'd, I would want the people of the Cram and Gardens Ward to have somebody who is competent, who is willing, who is able, who has a proven track record to be able to carry through this, especially in this first four years after the first elections since the time that we've been in administration. I think it'll be key to set the pace and the flavor of what the council will be going into the future. Brother Blessing, I want to thank you for visiting us and uh, congratulations. And I want you to wish you the best uh, in your ward. Yep. And also wish, wish, wish us the best here in, in our own ward, man. When yeah. the election comes, we'll just be voting yep. for someone else, but we'll be wishing you for for for, 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 for success as well. <laughs> I've met some of the candidates. You've mm. got some good people walking up and down your streets. I can Beautiful. tell you that they'll be knocking on your And I can see too. it's not only about your ward, it's no. about the whole area itself. This is about our home. This when can we see you back again? Uh, let's organize for the next week or two for me to be back here to have a chat and then uh, yes we'll give updates on what's happening on the ground and uh, people can uh, get their questions answered so feel free to send through uh, questions through the Casey Voices website or, or the social media platforms we've also got a dedicated phone number which is 0468397748 and if you're a local you'll know that 3977 is a local first code can you so, say it again so 0468 Three nine seven seven. I'll write it down somewhere. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's our dedicated number that you can actually call and Blessing will answer. So I'll actually be there to answer you. The email address is blessing at kcvoices.com.au. Mm-hmm. It's blessing at kcvoices.com.au. And basically it comes straight to me. 
and I get to read all the feedback and hear what it is. And uh, if you've got your contact details there, I might pick up the phone to give you a buzz uh, so that we can actually meet maybe over coffee or at the, at the park and see how we can uh, discuss what's important to you and add it to the list of things at KC Voices. Beautiful. This is a Pondra show. This one is in Shona. I just said uh, purity, yeah. it cannot be regulated. Thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope I'll see you, Brother Blessing, in the coming few weeks. Brother Blessing, thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Ron. Thanks for sitting at this place. Thanks.